Hey, 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 what's going on? I am Big Meech, and this here is a Big Meech moment. Listen, there's a whole bunch of talk going on, child, about what it is to be transphobic. If somebody who does not want to date trans people, does that mean that they are transphobic? Okay? Now, I'm going to say this. Oftentimes, you know, folks have a preference, right? They have their preferences. They know what they are attracted to. Uh, At the same time, there are those who have preferences and those who have prejudices. And oftentimes, a lot of folks hide their prejudices under the guise of preference. But because no one or someone does not wish to date a trans person, that does not mean that they are transphobic. No, it does not. What makes them transphobic is that whenever all the vitriol and the venom and the maliciousness and the dehumanizing and the demeaning way that you communicate that to a a trans person, that's what makes it transphobic. You don't have to sit down there and and cuss the girl out or talk about how big her dick is or, or how... Uh, embarrassed or how defensive it makes you or how uncomfortable it makes you because you're a clock to a T or whatever and you realize this is something. It doesn't require all that. See, when you start to go in on the clowning and carrying on, that's what makes that transphobic. That's what makes that the hatred. That's what makes that everything else. It has uh, the same implications. Men... You know how when you make your shot at a woman and when she tells you no, she's not interested in carrying on and that you still try to push up on her? Or not not even if you try to push up on her, but if you went up on her and then she just cut you down. And not only does she cut you down, but then she talk about your raggedy shoes, she talk about your car, she talk about your nappy head, she talk about whether or not your grill is together. When she start going through all those five points to shut you down, Especially in front of folk, and especially around her girlfriends or whatever, we should she start doing that to belittle, to uh, demean you and belittle you. That is the disrespect. That is the hatred. That is all of those things that becomes unnecessary, and that's what happens. And the same thing with gay folks. See, it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't make you homophobic that you know that you're not attracted to uh, the same gender. But what makes it? Is when you sit down there and now you want you want to sit down here and create an episode. You want to fight. You want to sit down there, and, nigga. What's wrong with you? I ain't know. You want to go through all that huffing and puffing, that macho machismo shit, instead of just saying, "Dude, I ain't rolling like that." Now it's another thing when you have to defend yourself because there are those who are pushy, just like you are with men. Men just like you are with women. Okay, when you sit up there trying to shoot your shot. And you thinking that, okay, you know, you in this mindset that no don't mean no, okay, and you could just shoot shoot your shot at care, no, or you're going to be persistent, okay? And and if your persistence still gets to the point where you become unbearable, then you get what you asked for. Now, that's a whole separate issue. But when you get to the point where uh, you are pushing... And it's, and it's evident that they, they, they are resistant and you don't want to let go. That's when we step into those particular realms of you get what you ask for, just like I just said. But before you get to that point and you're like, okay, I'm good, I'm cool. But then you still want to keep going. If you have not got to that point to where you have to defend yourself and you just sit up there spitting on all that, all that, spewing on all that venom and that hatred, that's what makes it the hatred and the phobias and carrying on. That's what gives it the, the, the teeth that everybody wanted to have. And that's what makes it news. That's what makes it uh, all this, that, and the other. Now, I will say this. To be fair, my trans sisters out there, I don't need for y'all to sit down there telling everybody that they're being transphobic because they don't want to date you. See, oftentimes, that happens because of your insecurities. See, if you run up a part of mayhem, or someone, that, and I'm talking about trans women right now, because uh, they, they seem to get it. My trans brothers out there, y'all not in the news right now as far as your transitioning like, like the trans women are. Um, 
But let, let, let me stay on point. Oftentimes, when we get into, into that, oh, you just this and you just that, it's because of self-esteem issues. Oftentimes, uh, somebody ends up liking you and they're hoping that you like them in, in return. And when it's not reciprocated, then all of a sudden it becomes a problem and your self-esteem want to, want to spit and to spew bullshit because you hurt and because you feel as though you're supposed to be able to go after what it is that you say that you want and carry on. But honey, it doesn't always work like that. Okay, it doesn't always work like that. There are going to be moments, honey, to where you're not going to be everybody's cup of tea or a cup of coffee, honey, okay? You're not going to be the crumpets to everybody's milk, honey. You, you are not the Oreo to dunk in that person's milk, okay? So oftentimes, we have to deal with the insecurity of your self-esteem issues because everybody ain't for everybody, okay? And if you're not honest about it, you know, see, here's the other thing. You can't, he cannot be transphobic if you're not transparent. Okay? Now, the, the community is always, y'all getting backlash and carrying on because the folks are saying, well, y'all tricking folks, y'all tricking folks. Uh, straight folks, let me tell you this. 99% of the time, it ain't no damn trick. These folks know what the hell they up against. Okay? It ain't no trick. All right, but for that one percent where it where it is, for because we got up that population who believe that they don't have to tell right away or whatever, honey, that's what you're wrong. You have to give everybody the choice. And if a man does not know what your tea is or whatever, and you're trying to get romantic, that there is going no, that's not cute. That there is not cute. So what we have to do is number one, deal with our self-esteem issues. Number two, deal with our honesty and our transparency. Number three, we have to learn how to say, this ain't my cup of tea, and then be able to move on. Once we're able to move on and, and let it go, then we could, we could alleviate some of this bullshit about, oh, this is transphobic and carry it on. You don't have to like it. You don't have to like it and, and or, or love it in order to have an opinion. But when your opinion becomes that you got to you got to demean and dehumanize somebody simply because of something that you don't you don't like or you're in disagreement with, that ain't cool. And that's the part that we have to take out of this equation. If we remove that part out of the equation, then we won't have none of this other. Then this won't be a topic. It'll be simply the whole thing of life lessons and, and about the, the rules of love, honey. They're just simply not that into you. Ain't that what the movie say? Hmm. I'm Big Meech, honey, and this is a Big Meech moment.